we've gone from 4K to 20 mil. At $20,000 a day passively. The story doesn't end at 100 mil. So this is a really special episode. Um, I've had two, maybe even three viral tweets go out about this. Uh, Daniel, you're a bit of a legend for uh, our audience and it's finally happened. So uh, before I get into the episode, introduce you properly, a story of how we met. So uh, guys, some I get a DM on Twitter from an account I've never seen before. He's got a crypto punk as a picture and he says, hey buddy, do you wanna meet up in Dubai? Never spoken to him, never interacted with him, never liked one of his tweets. And um, I'm like, okay, cool. Let's go meet up in a public location, somewhere safe. Um, and I don't even know why I said yes. I, I literally think NFTs were hot at the time. You had a crypto punk and I'm like, okay, cool. Let's do this. We met at the Dubai mall and turns out this random person who messaged me uh, was one of the biggest NFT whales. I uh, No, the biggest NFT whale I've ever met. He's got the rarest crypto punk. He knows everyone and everything that has anything to do with NFTs. And he dropped that he was making uh, $20,000 a day passively through NFTs and uh, the metaverse, which we'll get into on this episode. So uh, Daniel, one of the craziest crypto people um, I've ever met in terms of story. I don't think you're actually insane, but um, yeah, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Um, let's do this. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. You know, it was a great story as well. You know, like when I reached out to you and like the whole meeting you, like, you know, in this like very public mall with like a ton of people around us <laughs> and everyone else. Like, I definitely sense that there's like a, a, you know, this like sphere of like caution there as well. But like, you know, it worked out to be um, the real deal. It was awesome. Well, you got to be careful. And I, I was surprised you doxed. I was ready to put your super rare crypto punk on your face for the whole episode. Uh, do, you, do you ever get worried about security concerns and stuff with crypto? Yeah, like, no, like, absolutely. Um, it's definitely, like, something that's crossed my mind quite a bit just recently, especially in 2021 when we saw such a, you know, a parabolic rise in, like, the NFT world. Um, and it's definitely something that's, you know, like, been in the back of my mind and, like, something that I definitely, you know, take into consideration, like, when I do meet up with people, when I do travel. You know, certain countries I will require security and obviously, like, anything that I post on social media, um, you know, it, it's all, like, time delayed as well. So I... Um, if you see me at the beach or at some restaurant or at a, a hotel, it's usually uh, 24 to 48 hours after the actual fact. Uh, yeah, I, I take similar precautions and I haven't even uh, got a story as fraction as crazy as yours uh, with, uh, I mean, let, let's get, get into that story because you, you weren't always in the position uh, you were now. It was quite a journey, wasn't it? Uh, do you want to go ahead and tell the people? Yeah, sure. So like, you know, everything kind of started for me in like early 2013. So uh, it was like February 2013. I was still a university student um, studying psychology um, of all things. And um, I was one of those students who like I, I never really wanted to work a nine to five. I never really wanted to um, be a psychologist, never wanted to be in the rat race, I guess. And um you know, I, I guess like I always used to procrastinate on my assignments and I came across this BBC article about Bitcoin. Um, I think at the time it was $20 and it had just surged to about $30 or $40. And, you know, it really like piqued my interest a little bit. I thought, you know, this could potentially be my, you know, lucky ticket out of this, you know. Um, so really just like dove down the, the crypto rabbit hole Um you know, really actually believed in like, you know, what I was reading. Um, at the time, there was like that Cypriot crisis and the banks were like getting raided by the government. Um, and I really did see the importance of like, you know, being your own bank and having con total control over your money. Um, so that's really like, I guess, like where the story starts. And, you know, I just continued to like, you know, trade in and out of Bitcoin, you know, into like altcoins on like Cripsy and um, I think it was called MintPal back in the day as well. You know, all those like old school uh, alternate currency uh, exchanges that were around back then. Um, and then basically like by 2017, obviously, as we all know now, we had like the ICO boom, um, you know, prices absolutely skyrocketed. And, um, you know, by this point, I I'd finished my psychology degree and I had actually gone into like law school because I wanted to become a lawyer. And um, I get, that gave me kind of the confidence to... Uh, you know, to walk away. Um, that was finally like the point in time, like where I had the financial freedom um, to basically, you know, pursue crypto full time. Um, and what I did is I ended up purchasing, you know, enough like uh, properties, like it was commercial, residentials, 
just to sort of like as like a, a padding, you know, like if all of this ended up going to zero, at least like I had some kind of, you know, security blanket there as well. Um, so then I went full time crypto in 2017 and just traveled the world like for I think it was like for 12 to 18 months. I think I went to about 50 different countries. I went through like, you know, South America, Central America, North America, Europe. Um, and then, you know, I think after a while, um, you know, like traveling is great and all, but you know, there wasn't, it wasn't very fulfilling as well. You know, I think I lacked purpose in that time. And that's when I really like, you know, decided to like jump back into the ring. And like, that's when I discovered NFTs. Daniel, before we, can, can I pause the story there, ask a few questions and then we get to the NFT chapter, if that works for you. Absolutely. So uh, you said during this period, you, you made enough to buy property as a security. So I'm, I don't know if I can ask about specifics, but what does that mean? Enough to travel the world, 50 different countries, buy a few properties. How well did this go? Where did you start? And how exactly did you get to the point where you're buying multiple properties? Yeah, so basically, like, I think it was, um, I think it was like April of 2017. That's when I like basically made my first million. Um, so, you know, w w to give you like some context, like, you know, I was a university student. I started with $4,000 in 2013. Um, and I worked my way up to a million dollars by April, 2017. So that was like when I first took like some money out to like actually purchase my first property because I wanted to be able to like live in some like, you know, in a place and, you know, obviously try and make some money from that as well. Um, you know, through like rental and, and things like that. Um, and I, I don't know how I did it, but I just timed the market incredibly well. Um, and I actually ended up cashing most of my money out like during the summer of that year. And then by about August, I actually then reinvested most of that money back into the markets again. And then I rode that final wave up into like December where we got the blow off top, right? Um, and then that, I, I think like at the time, like my total net worth was about 20 to 22 million. But I only took out half because I was like still a little, you know, of course, like, you know, you're euphoric at the time. I didn't really realize like, you know, whether this was going to be the absolute top or not or whether it was going to continue going. Um, so I, I took enough out to basically buy like two commercial, no, one commercial property and two residential properties. And and that was netting me roughly about one hundred and eighty thousand dollars a year. So. For me, you know, that was enough to like basically, you know, walk away, travel, do whatever, whatever the hell I wanted to do, basically. And um, yeah, just live on that income. Now, if you were to go back again, uh, would you make the same reinvestment? Like, do you think that was the smartest thing to do with your money at the time? Yeah, for me, it wasn't about like the capital gain. It was more just about like the security. You know, I, I wanted something tangible enough that like, no matter what happened in the crypto world, you know, I would always have something physically there that I actually owned. Um, and, you know, I don't think property is the the best, um, you know, return on investment, as we all know, coming, you know, from the, the crypto world, um, you know, we're, we're very much used to 1000% uh, returns plus, but, you know, for me, it was like, it was safe and it was certain, you know, and that's what I really needed at the time. Uh, because that's what how I sort of like, I guess, like, warranted like you're walking away from law school and you know pursuing a life of like crypto and I, I needed that blanket um in order to do that i mean when you get to 20 mil you're at the point where you care just as much maybe even more about capital preservation versus a thousand x or even uh, like becoming a billionaire like you just want to make sure you don't lose it at that point and i guess you, you got a lot of psychological comfort as well to do what you wanted to do which wasn't grow that into a greater sum but go see 50 countries exactly exactly you know I, I just really wanted you know that security for myself and then you know potentially you know for my future as well you know like for like when i settle down and like have a family and everything like i don't want to be that um that idiot who kind of like made it all and then lost it all as well you know because you hear that too often as well um so yeah for me it was just something that i really needed to do to ensure that like you know i could actually have a peace of mind where like, you know, whenever I traveled or whatever I did around the world, like I just knew I always had that guarantee, like $180,000 hitting my bank account every year. That's a pretty nice guarantee to have. So uh, you had this wild story going from $4,000 to 20 million, timing the market perfectly. Well, this is where it gets crazy. What happened next? <laughs> So yeah, so basically, you know, I, I, I traveled for like some time, as I mentioned, you know, I, I did get like, you know, um, 
yeah, you know, I, I saw a lot of different places. It was a lot of fun at the time as well. But you know, I, I quickly realized that you know it wasn't fulfilling. You know, there, there was nothing that was like kind of like getting me up and you know in the morning anymore. Um, and that's kind of like when I really realized like I needed to like jump back into this whole um space again and I wanted to like you know sort of like see like what's trending at the time because obviously there's like a lot of talk about like DeFi you know I'd heard about NFTs in 2017 completely wrote them off because I just thought you know with all these other ICO scams I just thought like these must be a scam as well like why would people spend any you know any kind of money on like you know digital jpegs you know like why would you spend any amount of money on like a, a digital cat or like there's like crypto punk or anything like that so very much dismissed it initially and then i think you know when i um you know started to jump back into the the, the crypto space um I, I just gave everything a serious look you know like i wanted to like give it a, with a fine you know tooth comb um you know like i really wanted to actually look over what was happening in, in the DeFi space, what's going on like with these like NFTs. And I think the thing that really like stood out for me was Axie Infinity. Because like, you know, as a kid, like I used to play like a lot of like video games, I guess. And for me, like what I loved about, you know, Axie Infinity was the whole like play to earn aspect, right? So, you know, instead of just buying something for like pure entertainment, you're actually spending money to like actually get a return on your investment. So that's what I really loved about the whole like play to earn space. And that's what like really like sang to me as well. So that's why I really like got into like Axie Infinity because I love the idea of like being entertained while actually making money. I don't think you're doing yourself justice from, uh, cause I've heard this story before and it wasn't just uh, looking through the space, it was hours and hours of research every single day into absolutely everything you could find in crypto that you were interested in. There was a lot of hard work going into this before you ended up stumbling across Axie Infinity. Yeah, well, you know, like I was like a little bit like, I guess like I became like a little bit of a fanatic, right? Because, um, you know, like I, I really do like, you know, like to deep dive, like whenever I do think that I've found something. And, you know, I, I really did like, you know, look over everything because like, I think at the end of the day, like Twitter, Discord is like the best, like, you know, resource for this. And I was very much lurking, you know, I had all of this like capital from crypto that I really was like basically waiting to deploy. I just needed to find the right project as well. And I think like Axie Infinity was the first project that actually ticked a lot of those boxes for me. Um, and, you know, when I, when I did eventually invest in Axie, I think it was January, 2019, um, you know, I think I made like quite the splash, you know, it was like quite a sleepy community um, before I arrived, you know, there wasn't like too much volume or activity really like going on. And then suddenly I just like came on into the scene and just started just buying up everything. I was buying all the land up, I was buying all the mystic axes up, I was buying all the axes up. And everyone was just like, who is this guy? I was just throwing cash, you know, at the wall, basically. So you know, that definitely was like, you know, that sort of like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like, I guess like an all or nothing kind of guy, right? Like I'm never gonna like half ass anything. Um, and you know, for me, it's like, if I do truly believe in something, like I'm, I'm going to like back myself as well. So when I, you know, when I did get into Axies, like, I think I was like one of, if not the largest, you know, land holders, like, you know, I had like a sizable, like mystic Axie collection as well. Um, and I honestly just enjoyed like being part of the community as well, you know, like I think like, you know, it's just great like, you know, being around like, you know, like minded people who are also very interested in the whole like NFT space and also play to earn. So you've, you've done this quite a few times already at this point in the story and I know there's more to this story as well. Uh, taking Axie specifically, uh, what lessons do you think you could take from managing to spot that as an opportunity that you could potentially reapply in future or someone listening to this episode can apply themselves to? Uh, maybe not just investment opportunities, but really any opportunity that comes their way. Yeah, no, look, like, I, I think like for me, it's like, you know, it, it's all about the risk reward, right? So like, I'm always like stacking things in my favor. So like, I'm looking for things that are still like hidden gems. Like, it's very much like I trade like that Warren Buffett quote, like, you know, be greedy when others are fearful, be fearful when others are greedy. Like I, I really thrive in environments where there's a lot of fear or there's just no interest in that particular project because like, that's where you get like the most upside potential. Obviously it's the most risky, but the thing is if the fundamentals are there, like I really do believe that the risk is very like, you know, it, it, you, you mitigate it, right? Because like at the end of the day, it's like, if you can back yourself like with like, a, you know, a series of different like, you know, um, like criteria, I think like, you know, for me, like that's, 
it, it's, it's warranted, you know. So for me, it was like, you know, I, I, you first and foremost, like you want to look at the team, like who are they? Do they have like a, a history, like, you know, in succeeding in this particular space? Um, you know, you, you want to see like the size of like the actual like marketplace as well. It's like, you know, like, is there like a, a lot of like volume? Are there like a lot of like users? What's the market cap as well? You know, like what's the community like? Are they loyal? You know, do they believe in this project? What's the roadmap like? You know, like a lot of these different factors, like, you know, is something that I consider like when I'm getting into something. And like another thing is like, you know, especially in the NFT space, because they are so like, you know, a liquid, it's like, is there a token involved as well? Because tokens are basically like, you know, that's where you get the liquidity, but also where you get like the crazy, like, you know, price rise as well. Uh, so that that's extremely useful for analyzing really any investment even outside of play to earn uh, in the space right now uh, at this point in the story when you say buying up enough to make serious noise uh, how much are we talking how much of your net worth is going into axie at this point yeah look so like i think like you know as I mentioned, I only really took like half of my net worth out in 2017. Um, so that was like in some way, like I guess a mistake because, you know, I ended up reinvesting the remaining 10 million into like a lot of these like tokens that ended up going to like zero almost, you know, they all went down 80% or so. Um, so I really didn't have that much like, you know, working crypto capital at the time. And like, you know, when I first discovered like Axie Infinity, like I probably would have put in about... 20 to 25 percent of my entire net worth um and like looking back at that now like it like you know it's like minuscule but like you know because like we saw such an incredible rise in nfts that grew very quickly as well um so i think like all up like you know after i also invested like you know in mega cryptopolis i also invested in like crypto punks autoglyphs you know various like you know other like nfts as well um, I would have been about 50, 50, like crypto and NFTs at that point. So how did you find the NFTs? Um, and then please do progress the story as to what happened next. Yeah, sure. So basically, you know, got very involved in like, you know, Axie Infinity. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, for me, like, you know, as I mentioned, like, I really love the community. I love the, the idea of play to earn, but it wasn't quite there yet. Um, you know, they had like this automated like battle system at the time. Um, you know, which you could earn like, you know, experience from and like, you know, you needed that experience to then like breed your axes and, and so forth. Um, but it wasn't really living up to like the whole like play to earn hype that like, you know, got me initially very excited. So, you know, then I discovered like an, another game called Mega Cryptopolis, which actually had the play to earn, you know, mechanics in place already. So what you could do is basically like SimCity, but like on the blockchain. So you could actually buy land on this game and then you could like build like, you know, towers and, and whatnot. And, you know, every single like, you know, building had a different function. So like, you know, you had like office spaces, you had like an ambulance, you had like hotels. And like, for example, a hotel would like, you know, breed your citizens, an office space would like earn money from the taxes and, and things like that. So, you know, I very much like delved into that as well, because like at the time I was really looking for like other games to like, you know, diversify into as well. Gods Unchained was like, another one. Um, but it wasn't really until like, you know, like um, CryptoPunks when I really started to like, you know, dive into more just like the the PFP sort of like, you know, sector, you know, like I really loved the idea that like, you know, you could actually use one of these punks as like your display picture online. And it, it almost became like, you know, like at the time it wasn't really like a, a flex at all. Like really it was just like who had the rarest crypto punk, right? Um, and like, you know, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm an all or nothing sort of guy. So when I discovered these like crypto punks, like, you know, my first, you know, my, my, the first thing that I did was like, I, I wanted to hunt down all of the rarest crypto punks. And that's how I came across the seven trade, you know? So like, there's, it's very like, it's almost like a meme now in the discord where there's literally a, a, a message from me, like in the discord, like asking like, what's the rarest crypto punk? And I think this was like only in May, 2020. So like not very long ago at all. So like, I think a lot of people thought that I was like, you know, involved in like this like NFT space for like years and years and years, but it's like, no, not really. Like I was a noob only like, you know, a year and a half ago as well, you know? Um, Daniel, a lot of people so, don't know what the seven trait even is. Could you explain that? Yeah. So, so basically, you know, I, I discovered that this, like, you know, there's like the seven trait crypto punk. It was basically a one of one. It had its own category. It's the only crypto punk with its own category. And what I mean by seven traits is that it has a seven attributes. So it's got like the big beard. It's got the cigarette. It's got a mole, buck teeth, 
earring, sunglasses, and a top hat. Um, so basically what a crypto punk is, is like, you know, they range from zero attributes all the way to seven. Um, and then basically, you know, you like the, the zero attributes, there's like eight of them. And then it ranges all like, you know, basically it's like a bell curve, I guess, like, you know, throughout the whole, like, you know, across the trades. And then like, you, you've got the one seven trade at the very end. So I guess like a lot of people refer to that seven trade punk as like the Mona Lisa of like the NFTs, because not only were like crypto punks, you know, one of the first, you know, NFTs, they were certainly the first like PFP NFTs, at least on Ethereum. Um, you know, but this is also like the pinnacle of that, you know, that project as well. Um, so I guess like that's what like, you know, gives the seven trade like, you know, it's quite a bit of significance like within the space. It's like historically significant, but it's also like very like fundamentally, you know, got like a lot of significance as well uh, within the actual project itself. Um, so, you know, like basically, you know, once I secured the, the seven trade punk, then I, you know, proceeded to also buy, you know, a, a bunch of different other, uh, you know, Crypto punks as well, such as like the zero trade as well, and uh, a six trade, and you know I got an ape and a, a zombie, um, and you know a, a various other like you know crypto punks. I got quite the the bag, I guess, um, which like obviously like very much like paid off for me uh, last year in twenty twenty one. And uh, what does it paid off for you mean, Daniel? <laughs> yeah, so. Basically, you know, I, I saw like I would say I, I saw like my uh, my net worth uh, from 2020 to 2021 um, ballooned by about a 100 X. Um, so like it, obviously like, you know, um, it, this is all just like uh, like you know, speculation of like, you know, what that entire bag now would look like, um, including, you know, my autoglyphs and like my crypto punks and you know, and everything else. Um, but we're, we're looking at roughly like the $100 million mark at the moment. So, the, and this is last year still. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, you know, like obviously... Wow. Um, What's going through your head at this point? Like, are these just numbers in a screen? Because you've done it before. You've gone from 4K to 20 mil. Did it feel different from 20 to 100? Did that hit different at all? Honestly, I, I think it was probably good that I made my money in 2017 because I've just become so numb to it at this point. Um, you know, like, uh, you know, last year, like, it was absolutely surreal, like, you know, like, seeing the valuations and, like, some of these, like, NFTs. But for me, it was like, you know... It, I'll never forget that moment when I've made my first million. Let's just say that, you know, like I remember like when I've made my first million in, in April, 2017, I had like saucepan eyes. My heart rate was like flying. <laughs> like I couldn't wait to tell everyone around me. Right. Like everyone was so happy for me. People were like crying. Like it was insane. But, you know, going from, you know, like, I, I guess like whatever I, you know, invested in like NFTs to like, up to about a hundred million dollars. And it just didn't hit the same, you know, a very like, I guess like, numb to the numbers now it's it's all kind of like it doesn't really significantly change my life at this point you know like for me it, it's just like i guess like numbers on the screen um and also like it's not it's, it's not real until you cash it out as well you know what i mean um and, and until you do have like that big cash out event and like you can actually enjoy you know those profits um it, it, it doesn't really like mean much to me at all um and i guess like you know at this point it's just kind of like you're just doing it just to say that you've got it, right? Like, you know, I, I want to keep working. Like, you know, what keeps me motivated is just to say, like, look, I'm, I'm still building. I'm still growing. Like, I don't want to, like, see my net worth, like, shrink at all as well. And, like, for me, it's like, you know, one day it'd be fantastic to be, like, like be able to claim that I'm a crypto billionaire. You know, and that's kind of, like, what I guess I'm working on now for the, this decade. Uh, it, this was one of the things we really uh, bonded over when we did meet is that, uh it's hard to for people who haven't been in crypto to relate to. I think uh, maybe the only other market in recent history is uh, from if you've seen the movie Wolf of Wall Street, like what they were experiencing back then when money was just uh, flowing freely. But even now, I don't know if you've ever gone back and watched the Wolf of Wall Street movie, but the numbers they talk about are just like tiny compared to what we see happen in crypto right now on a daily basis. And uh, it just numbs you <laughs> entirely to... Um, any gain in money and uh, once you get to that situation you realize oh wait absolutely nothing changes uh not only is the money meaningless but it's normally earned in such a rapid uh way relative to a lot of other ventures which require so much hardship that uh crypto money really is <laughs> one of the least fulfilling uh ways to earn money uh possible 
Yeah, exactly. And, you know, and you do become like the envy of like the people who have been, you know, working their asses off the last like decade or two, you know, you get into like where they are today and then they just see this like, you know, 20 year old, like crypto rich kids who just like <laughs> struck gold you know, in the last like few months, just like trading JPEGs, you know, the, the number of people that I know who have gone from like debt to like tens of millions of dollars now, it's like insane. Um, you know, and then that's just like, I guess like, you know, um, it, it, it really just shows like how insane this whole entire space has been, you know, and like, like really like the whole, like what, what's really happened in like 2021. It's like, I'm, I'm thinking of it now. It's like, I'm speechless, you know, like I never would have predicted like any of this for like to happen in 2021 at all. But even amongst us crypto folks, Daniel, uh, you, you would be doing yourself a disservice if you lumped yourself in with everyone who's done slightly well, well, or even very well. You're, you've done exceptionally well beyond the norm. And um, a lot of that is luck because we're right being in the right place at the right time. But also a lot of it is hard work and consistent good decisions um, because the story doesn't end at 100 mil. Uh, 100 mil <laughs> is where we were in 2021. What happened next, Daniel? Yeah. So, you know, like I think like, coming back to like, you know, with what you said about luck, though, it's like with luck, it's like you need to identify, you know, the, the opportunity. But not only that, you need to like have conviction as well. You know, you need mm -hmm. to act on that. And, you know, like I think a lot of people like some people at least are very good at like, you know, identifying those opportunities. But a lot of people are inherently quite risk adverse as well. They don't actually act on it. And when they do act on it, you know, they don't go all in on something as well. You know what I mean? Um, so I, I think like, you know, I guess like that's like being like a little bit of like the secret sauce to my success, because like I've been someone who's like been very good at like you know, spotting these like, you know, trends, but also like going in and backing myself, you know? So no, like, I, I guess like, you know, like last year was very much the peak, um, you know, last, I think it was August, September, like when like, you know, OpenSea was starting to like record like record volumes and everything. And, you know, that was like a, a point where, you know, everything was starting to look very toppy in the, in the NFT space. We were seeing like, you know, hundreds of thousands of people signing up for like wallets. And, you know, for me, it's like, you know, I didn't want to really make that same mistake that I made in like, let's say 2014. So like, for example, I participated in the, the Ethereum ICO back in the day. I think I bought my Ethereum for, I can't remember now, it's like 30 cents or so. Um, but I sold it for $3, right? So... For me, like, you know, looking at, you know, at this, like the infancy of this NFT space, it's like when you look at the metrics, when you look at the, the number of like wallets being created, the, the volume on like some of these projects, you know, it's still minuscule and can, you know, compared to like where this could potentially go. So, you know, I, I haven't really like cashed out anything really at all. Um, I, I, again, it's all speculation. You know, I've, I've had, you know, some big offers on some of my NFTs. The most recent one was 30 five million dollars i believe on like a set of my nfts which i declined um and like i i like to be conservative as well you know like with my net worth like i don't want to you know hype people up and and tell them like you know because I, I know some people think for example that the, the seven trade punk you know it, it, you know it, it, it's basically priceless you know like they, they say that it's worth like a hundred million dollars by itself or 150 million 200 million dollars you know I, I don't want to like be that person who's like you know, really like trying to hype my own bags i try to keep a conservative number and like i try to like just keep that at like a nice round like hundred million dollars figure i think i could be i could very easily get that if i wanted to sell all of my nfts right now but i could potentially get a lot more if i you know also wanted to wait and see like what other prices I could get. I mean, you don't need the money right now. So there really is no pressure on you to sell. I mean, I'm sure even if it all goes to zero, it would sting definitely, but yeah, you'd yeah. be absolutely fine. Uh, Dan, I'm going to ask two questions. Um, firstly, can you share the highest offer you've ever gotten for an NFT? And can you also share the highest peak you think your net worth got to uh, during the insanity? Sure. So, um, uh, an auction house, um, they offered um, on consignment um, for uh, my seven trade punk um, at $200 million. <laughs> um, so that's whether that would actually, sell. again, like I'm, I'm again, I'm very conservative here. Like whether that would sell or not, I have no idea. That was just the offer put forward to me. Um, and that was, I believe last April, around like April, May. Um, so that was the highest, you know, like kind of like offer that I've actually ever received on like a, a single like NFT. Um, and that's like where like, you know, where like, it's very hard to now like sort of like work out like, you know, what the actual, like my, my total net worth is. Um, 
And then, like, I, I would say, like, around that time, like, if you do value the seven trade punk at $200 million, um, that would probably then would have put my net worth at, like, the highest it's probably ever been, which would have been maybe, like, $250 million. Um, but... Again, like I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not the the hype guy that everyone wants me to be. I'm trying to be conservative here, and you know, I'm, I, I think, you know, for me, like I, I honestly do believe, like, if I wanted to liquidate everything today, it would be around the hundred million dollar mark. Yeah, it's um, pretty impressive, incredible to have gone from, because because people also don't appreciate, like, it's not that difficult like it's difficult to 10x from 10k to 100k and then it's a little more mm -hmm. difficult to 10x from 100k to a million to go from a million to 10 and then 10 to 100 like the game completely changes it's like a completely different game the issues that come up the liquidity the games you have to play so much has to be done otc uh, it's incredibly mm -hmm. impressive it's, uh, seriously huge congratulations to you and it wasn't only in assets that you did it you also managed to generate huge revenue streams uh, that were passively coming in. Could you tell us a bit about those? Yeah, sure. So, like, I think like the great thing about this entire like you know NFT space as well is that you know um, airdrops. You know, <laughs> you know, we, we, we experience not just like in like you know like DeFi, like you know decentralized exchanges. Like we obviously saw that the Uniswap airdrop, we saw like, you know Sushi Swap and everything as well. But in the NFT space as well, like we saw like you know the ENS airdrop, we got the SOS airdrop as well just recently. Um, oh, that was beautiful. You know, and then we also yeah, it was fantastic, right? And then we also um, you know got the the Luxray airdrop as well. Um, and you know, just right now, I'm, I'm staking. I think it's about forty-five thousand dollars of looks rare. That's like netting me, you know, a few hundred dollars a day for free. Like, why not? <laughs> but I guess like the biggest airdrop that I received last year was from Axie Infinity. So basically, they did a snapshot, and like I think it was October twenty twenty. And basically, the snapshot took into account your entire, you know, um, portfolio of like Axie assets, um, but also like you know the volume that you've contributed to, like you know their exchange as well. Um, and I think there's like a few other like little like, you know, factors there as well. And um, I think like at the time they airdropped about $3 million worth of access tokens to me. And th this airdrop um, happened at the same time that like the staking went live as well. Um, so this is what I was like talking to you about in Dubai. Um, so basically instead of like, you know, just uh, liquidating and, and taking the 3 million, what I did was like I ended up staking the, the $3 million worth of access tokens um, and it was netting me uh, roughly about $20,000 a day, um, which was like, you know, it was insane, right? Because like, not only was this airdrop yeah. free, <laughs> I'm now getting a free $20,000 per day um, in access tokens. Um, and then, you know, the, the price of the, the access token due to the high APR, um, the price of the token was actually like going up as well. So I think like my $3 million airdrop at one point, like turned into like $5 million. Um, so then obviously <laughs> then, then my, like, you know, my, my daily like re rewards were actually also, um, increasing as well, like with the increase in price. Um, so, you know, I, I guess I have found myself in a very like fortunate position because like, you know, because I've been dabbling in so many different, like, you know, like NFT and like a D5, you know, projects you know i i have been able to like you know receive a bunch of these airdrops as well and you know not only you know as we were like talking about like you know with like property and you know receiving um you know x amount of dollars per year just from like you know my rental income but now i'm suddenly like getting like yield from like my digital assets as well which is like something quite new to the space like obviously we had you know mining you know proof of work and we had staking in the past but nothing you know at this kind of like you know level that we did like you know see in 2021 mind-blowing seriously mind-blowing i mean I, i've heard i i've had personally like six figure airdrops like that have just been the best thing to ever possibly happen um, in isolation and i've managed to cash out some of it and that was incredible but Man, a five million dollar airdrop that passively earns you twenty grand a day, and then that twenty grand appreciating as well—it's a movie. This is not real life, but in crypto, somehow it, it happens. Uh, 
As the crypto industry continues to mature, it's natural that more and more wealth building platforms will arise. The problem with many of these, however, is that they are often so complex that it disincentivizes people from using them. This is why I've partnered with Nexo, one of the top crypto lending platforms in the world. With over 1.5 million users and 15 billion assets under management, Nexo combines the yield earning features of crypto with the familiarity and ease of centralized finance. Nexo allows you to earn interest at a competitive rate on crypto and fiat. They also allow you to take out loans using crypto as collateral so that you have access to cash without needing to sell your investment. You can even trade directly on the web platform and mobile app in an intuitive and secure way. If you're looking to embark on the journey to financial freedom whilst minimizing time and frustration, I highly recommend you check them out by visiting nexo.io. That's N-E-X-O dot I-O. So that, that we've just heard the journey, um, the incredible journey from 4,000 to a peak of 250 million net worth. And now um, a, a very conservative 100 million. And beyond that, just uh, you experienced a whole bunch of stuff, learned a whole bunch of stuff. So uh, where are you at life right now? Yeah, like, you know, I think like I, I touched on this a little bit that, you know, it, it's not really about the money for me at this point, you know, like I really am like just optimizing for experiences and just like to have a, a, a fun time, you know, like I really want to um, really just like focus on like myself, I guess, like, you know, like, you know, personally, like, how can I improve myself, you know, as a person and like, you know, what can I do to like give back to this world as well? Like that's really like my way of like thinking at this point. Um, you know, I, I think for me, it's just like, you know, no one's ever perfect, but it's like, you know, that strive to perfection is like, you know, what really like gives you that sort of like, you know, that fulfillment. And that's kind of like where I'm at at this point, I guess. So, you know, it, it's really like, you know, I, I do still trade. I still watch the markets. Like I'm still obviously investing in like NFTs and things like that. Um, but like, you know, I'm, I'm really enjoying like, you know, exploring um, different like facets of NFTs now, like more like, you know, like fashion NFTs, music NFTs as well. Um, and like, you know, maybe like some of your listeners have heard of like Seed Phrase, the DJ. Um, so, you know, I, I really want to explore like DJing this year and really like take that off because, you know, I've already, you know, uh, I only really debuted, I guess, like, you know, last October in New York and you know, the, the amount of like opportunity that has presented itself to me, um, because I do have like a very, like, I guess, like very unique angle, right? Like I've brought this like seven trait crypto punk to life in the form of like this like helmet that I wear. And my goal with that is to really just like get people like curious and asking questions about this whole, you know, NFT space, you know, like I want people to like, you know, go to these like festivals or clubs and, you know, their friends saying like, who is this idiot like with this like you know marshmallow-esque sort of like helmet on his head right and i want the friend to be like oh no that seed phrase you know that is one of the most expensive like nfts in history sort of thing you know i want to like get that conversation started so you know that's what i think like you know it's a really like you know great mix for me because like you know i can still like obviously be in this like nft space but it's like that intersection between like nfts and then music so that's like you know a, a core interest of mine right now I love the idea of like fashion NFTs. I participated in the Genesis Dolce & Gabbana drop as well. I bought the Lion Crown. Um, and, you know, I got to know like a lot of the team through that as well, which is like fantastic. And obviously, you know, what UNXD is doing as well with Shashi, um, you know, spearheading that, you know, with like, you know, high-end fashion brands and, you know, watches and things like that as well. So, you know, really, really um, excited to like, you know, see where this all goes because at the end of the day, you know, obviously like what, crypto and bitcoin like did for money it's like you know these nfts are going to do that for everything else you know like an anything can really be tokenized and that's really like now like what i'm more like i guess like exploring at this point for people our listeners who don't know uh daniel was telling me about this in dubai that he had an idea of uh well, he's got this unique IP, oh, it, almost it's IP at this point of uh, this uh, crypto punk that you own, that it's yours, there's only one in the world, and it's the rarest original PFP NFT, and you've put on this mask, which represents this PFP, and uh, you DJ as this persona. It, it's such a simple but genius idea uh, that 
no one can ever match. Like we've now got these new identities that you attach to NFTs, but there can be nothing rarer. That, that I, fit, I do not see any way that that could possibly be a rarer NFT. And uh, what you touched on also was that, I mean, this not only helps spread the message, but uh, it felt like two parts, uh, three parts actually, I picked up from where you're going next. Uh, number one, you said you want to be a better person, which I want to dive into like what that actually means. Uh, number two, uh, it sounded like a lot of different things that all led to some sort of creative contribution to the world, be it through fashion, art, um, or your DJing, that's music. Uh, and then uh, the last one, was uh, to give back as well. So a creative contribution, giving back, and also improving yourself as a person. So uh, I want to dive into each of those individually, uh, and I'll finish with the art one. So uh, what does being a better person mean? In the sense of like giving back. Um, so really like, you know, like for me at least, like, you know, uplifting, you know, people within the space who have like not like traditionally like, you know, had that, you know, the the, the access to like, you know, technology or even like had that sort of like voice within the community to be able to like sell their NFTs, right? So like, I really do pride myself on like, you know, trying to like discover, you know, up and coming artists who, you know, are struggling to like, you know, make some like, you know, significant dent in the, in the ecosystem, you know? So really like, you know, trying to support as many artists as I can is like, you know, a really big like thing for me as well, because like, I think at the end of the day, like this isn't, um, you know, like it's not like, you know, in the traditional world where I feel like, you know, all the money sort of just like gets sucked up to the top, right? It's like, we've got this saying in mm -hmm. NFTs, like wag me, like we're all going to make it. And that's really like my mantra for, you know, my actions as well. Like I really do like understand that I've been incredibly privileged and I've done like, you know, incredible, you know, work already like in this space. But like, I also want to like, you know, you know, help like uplift people around me as well. So, you know, honestly, like, you know, like trying to like get into the space, like is very hard for like a lot of people. Like if you don't have that like social following, if you don't have like the connections, you know, it, it's very like hard for like a, a new artist to like find that voice, I guess. So for me, it's like really like helping uplift these people and also like, you know, like also bringing like NFTs to like, you know, there's like, um, I don't know, like, you know, to like certain like industries or like to certain to people who like, or artists even who haven't really discovered the NFT side of things just yet. And then maybe don't even believe in it yet, but they're struggling, you know, like they're struggling to make money on like social media or, or anything else. And it's like, well, no, like there is like this alternate that you can like also do as well. And, you know, I think a lot of people like would actually appreciate your work, you know, so really like trying to like onboard people as well. And like really just trying to change their lives for the better. Uh, how do you decide which artists you want to support and help bring up? I think like re more recently, like I have been like, I guess like more like focusing like on minorities and also females in the space as well. You know, I, I saw like a quite a disturbing statistic last year that I think it was around 5% of like all NFT profits were going to female artists, um, which needs to obviously be fixed. Um, so I think for me, it's like, that's really is my focus at this point, like really trying to like uplift as many like, you know, female artists in the space as well, because obviously as you know, like crypto is traditionally quite dominated by males. And I think, you know, like if we do want to like get this all inclusive, you know, um, community, like, you know, that's going to like prosper and flourish, like we need like to have that like equal representation of like, you know, all these different types of groups as well. So, you know, that's like for me, like, you know, a, a huge focus at this time. Have you seen uh, Irene Dow recently? <laughs> I have. <laughs> good on her. <laughs> Honestly, Very like, much good on her. <laughs> Yeah, like, honestly, like, you know, like, I, I, I'm not one to judge, you know, like, if, if uh, I think, like, people can get very creative, like, in ways that they're going to make money. And, you know, if there's a market for it, like, we're, we're good on her, you know, like, I think it's like, I'm, I'm not one to try to like, fight market forces, like, you know, we are in a free market, like, if you can make money selling pictures of yourself, like, as, a, a, as an NFT, um, I all the power to them, you know, and we're going to see more of that as well, obviously, like, you know, as time goes by, because I think, like, what's the point of, like, you know, doing that sort of stuff on OnlyFans or like on Instagram or, or whatever, like where it's very difficult to like make money on those platforms, you might as well just like turn it into NFT. And if you've got an audience for it, you know what, like, why not do it? Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I, I'm very much, and I, and I knew we'd be on the exact same page here. Um, play the hand you're dealt. Don't complain about other people being dealt a different hand. Uh, there's so much advantage to being a guy in this space right now. And it's so male dominated that like, okay, cool. Females have something they can do that most guys can't really do. 
get over it find something else that you can uh, have an advantage in you know like that that's just the way the game is it's it's not meant to be a completely level playing f- playing field it's just meant to have equal opportunity and then everyone plays the hand they're dealt exactly exactly no absolutely i completely agree with you and you know if you have like that unique advantage why not take yeah you, know, you know like why not take advantage of that it's just kind of like me like with my seven trait punk right so like if i've got the the means yep. to create like a a living breathing crypto punk in the form of a dj like why not like you know that's the hand that i've been dealt just wait until people complain and say how lucky you got that you got that punk and that's the only reason it's going well <laughs> it's going up i know that absolutely I'm, I'm bracing myself for it so are you really um is that the next big thing for you are you going to commit to this for like the long term like your de- your music your personal fashion contributions your artistic contributions to the world is that what's next for you yeah like you know like obviously you know like crypto nfts like that is my bread and butter like that is how i make the majority of all my money but the thing is it's like for me it's like i really do want to focus on music like i really do enjoy you know, listening and playing music. I love like what music does for this world, you know, brings people together, you know, you got that like clash of like cultures and it's like good feels, you know, like I want to be someone who like curates vibes, you know, like I love the idea of doing that. And, you know, I I think like that's really like important for me as well, because like obviously, you know, I've almost been doing this now for 10 years. I think it's coming up nine years in February that I've been, you know, trading crypto, um, you know, before NFTs, like, you know, I was trading like, you know, crypto derivatives. I was like, you know, staring at charts 24 seven. I was looking at the hourly close, the four hourly, the daily, the MACD, the RSI, the support, the resistance. Like, you know, that's not for me anymore. You know, like I, I can't do it. You know, like it's just like I'm beyond that now. It's getting to a point now where I just want to live a good life. I want to be like, you know, like fulfilled in other ways and like for me it's like i don't need to grind i don't need the stress anymore like trying to squeeze out an extra million dollars in a trade or something like that so like for me it's like you know my primary focus right now is music um you know even traditional art like i actually i'm really like enjoying like you know like physical like you know sculptures and like paintings and things like that as well because i think it's complementary to nfts you know i don't think no one would ever have like only nfts in their house i think it's like i think physical art like you know gives you something that nfts traditionally can't give you and then vice versa as well right so for me it's like you know i want a mix of both i want like you know beautiful like you know traditional artworks and i also want you know like picassos and and warhols and things like that but i also want you know my uh for worships and like my thank you x and you know i want that in my 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 um house as well so you know i think it's complimentary and i think like you know that's really going to be a big focus of mine as well um so yeah like for me it's like it's gonna be music it's gonna be art it's gonna be you know wherever i can like you know try to uplift as many people as i can as well like within the space and then also like look into like other ways like where i can be like you know helpful as well you know uh, so it really and having met you i mean um i would not have guessed your position or um what you'd managed to do because you were wearing a plain t-shirt black jeans and um a pair of trainers and i specifically remember what you were wearing because it was just the contrast between so many and i've met a lot of crypto people and a slightly different crowd i think to what you would socialize with where you're very much with the nft crowd i'm with the (laughs) traders and vcs who (laughs) got uh, yeah uh the iced out chains the um expensive 500k plus two million dollar okay. watches like I, I was at a table one time with 20 million in watches around the table you know like uh, th- these sorts of um environments and most of the people who flex like this don't have a fraction of the wealth that you've managed to build um so it's very um Again, it's one of the reasons I resonated. And uh, here are your interests in giving back to people, uh, enjoying uh, very awesome artist, well, not enjoying, enjoying artistic things for yourself, very cultured, developing all these uh, different collections. But I'm, I know, and I'm sure you'd like to have a lot of fun as well. Uh, do you have any um, crazy, and if you want to get obnoxious, like um, <laughs> stories where you've just decided, okay, I've earned this money, I'm going to have some fun. And uh, what have you done that you would not have been able to do without um, the wealth you've managed to build? Yeah, look, like, you know, like, 
you're very spot on. Um, you know, like I, I actually like I hate being too flashy. Like for me, it's like I just find it so classless. Like when people are just like dripped in Versace, they've got like the, <laughs> the Rolex or, or whatever, and they've got the high, you know, the rented, you know, Lamborghini or something, you know, out the back or something. Like it's not, it's not me at all. You know, like I, I very much, you know, do buy designer stuff, but it doesn't have, you know, Gucci or Balenciaga or like, you know. It's, you know, you, you'd have to really like know to know sort of thing, you know? So, you know, I, I do like, you know, obviously like, you know, everything that I wear is usually like, you know, it's just like very like subtle, like designer stuff. I buy in stuff more for like the fabric or the material or just because I just like the look of something, you know, like I don't really need to scream to everyone that I've got money. I do have nice watches, you know, I've got a, a Patek 5990R, uh, which is like, you know, a little present to myself last year. Um, you know, so like I've got like a, a nice like collection of like watches as well. Um, I love my wine, you know, who doesn't, um, you know, Quinterelli, you know, I love like, you know, I, I want to try Romane Conti this year as well. Um, so big into my wine, big into my food. I'm a huge foodie. I, I love to go to like nice restaurants. Um, and you know, obviously like- What are I, some of the best you've been to? Oh, I love Per Se um, in New York. Um, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for, um, for the like, you know, very like heavy, I guess, French food. Um, I, you know, I love, I love per se. I love in Madison, it's great. I've been to Attica in Melbourne. Uh, Doppelvoro in Venice randomly was fantastic as well. You literally, you get taken to this like private island and they grow everything. Oh, wow. They grow everything on the island. You can literally see the garden like from where you're sitting, you know? So, you know, like I, I'm a- How much does that set you back? I can't remember. I, honestly, I'm someone who does. I never look at the bill, like ever. Like I, I, I'm, I'm <laughs> really bad like that. Like I, I have no idea how. Like I'm. I guess like in that sense, like I'm a little bit distorted, um, because people ask me all the time, like, oh, how much does this cost? How much does that cost? Like I, I'm not too sure. But um, you know, it's like, because you live below your means. Like I, I have a, a like I again. I, I, I'm sure I don't spend as much as you do, but I also never look at the price because I know I live so far below my means that I don't need to really budget that much or look at it exactly like i just know because like i just put everything on like my amex and like i just know like you know those payments are always gonna get like you know filled like at the end of the month sort of thing you know so i i'm definitely um very much well within my means despite you know like my like my love of food and, and wine and you know like obviously when i travel now you know it, I'm, I'm no longer like backpacking or like staying somewhere cheap. Like I do stay like <laughs> nice like hotels, I guess. And like, you know, otherwise I'll like rent like a, a big villa, you know, for like my friends or whatever. Um, and you know, you know, this like, for the example, like this summer, like I want to get like a, a boat or something as well, you know? So like, I do have, I do have like a few like little like things that I, I do like, you know, occasionally enjoy as well. But for me, it's not about the day to day sort of like flashy lifestyle, you know, like, if, if it's for like a certain event or a particular like, you know, dinner or something like that, like I'll, I'll dress for the occasion. But generally, um, you know, I, I, I try to sort of like blend in, I guess. Yeah. Um, I mean, it'd be a shame if you didn't enjoy it at all, but it sounds like you spend it on things which matter to you rather than anyone else around you, uh, which is a very healthy relationship to have with money. Uh, a, a lot of people get lost in the money. What do you think has prevented you getting lost to it and just numbing and not really caring that much about it? Yeah, look, like it hasn't always like, I guess like been like a, an easy journey. Like, you know, like, I think, you know, going from, you know, $4,000 to your name as a university student to making millions only like, a, a, you know, four years later or so, um, you know, that really like, I guess like slaps you in the face a little bit, you know, because like for me, like I had, uh, like a, a 10 year plan. I think like, you know, most people try to plan ahead a little bit, right? And as long as you're kind of like making the right decisions along the way, you're like trying to like aim to like kind of get there, right? I guess. So for me, it was like, you know, my, I sort of like, I guess reached my like my 10 year plan within like, you know, a, a few short years. And, you know, I think that like that did a lot to me as well, right? Because I think like, you know, when, when, how do I, how do I put this? It's like, you know, when, when you've got like, you know, like this sort of like outlook that like you want to be like in a certain position, like, you know, like in your like mid thirties or late thirties or something like that. And then you suddenly like reach it like too early. I think it's kind of like, you kind of like lose like a little bit of purpose, right? Because like I'm waking up living and breathing crypto every single day for years and years and years to like one day reach this, like, you know, this goal. And then when you like all of a sudden like just hit it and then you smash through all of those other goals all along the way in like the one year, 
it's like then you like you kind of like lose purpose as well and like you don't really know like you know where you're going anymore and i think like that took like a, a lot for me to just like i guess you know re reimagine all of that and like really like you know just raise the bar a lot higher as well yeah so like I, I think like you know it's just because like you know i do come from like you know quite like humble beginnings it's like i never really felt the need to actually you know splash out my money like you know and so sort of, I guess like flex on other people as well, you know, like I, I don't think that's really fair. It's like, I'm not one to like, you know, look down on other people, speak down to other people as well. Like at the end of the day, like we'll dealt like, you know, certain cards in the side of our life. And, you know, I absolutely respect that as well. And like, you know, that means like for me, it's like, yeah, like, you know, I can definitely afford some luxuries and things like that as well. But like, it doesn't really mean that I want to just blow all of my money and, and be careless as well. Like, you know, with what I've been given. So I think like, earning a lot of money like when I was like younger like when I was like 26 27 um helped me like later on in life to like you know not really get I guess um corrupted by it you know in my 30s so you spoke about purpose and how it makes you lose purpose and um I find a lot of that is uh, most people's primary driver driver and scoreboard in life is that money mm -hmm. uh, and then once you get it especially like you said early you feel like oh I've there's almost like this ego inflation that makes it feel like there's nothing left to do. Uh, what I found really helpful is doing stuff that just humbles you. Like uh, I, I, when I, every time I step onto the mats and I've been getting into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu recently, it's one of my favorite things to do because it just reminds me that there are things in life that I absolutely suck at, like countless, countless things that just earning a bit of money through crypto really doesn't change. And so many mountains left to climb in life. It's just, there seems to be something arbitrarily special about the money mountain that um, gets put on a bit of a pedestal. And um, for people still climbing that money mountain, uh, and Daniel, this is gonna be one of our longest episodes, but um, no regrets whatsoever. Um, what would you say are hot trends for them to pay attention to? Like uh, going into 2022, uh, if I'm still climbing that mountain, unlike you, Daniel, I'm still looking at the MACDs every day, the RSIs, and I'm trying to make it in the markets. What areas, what sectors would you pay attention to uh, for the coming year? Yeah, no, like, look, like, I, I think you're, like, absolutely right, you know, like, I think, like, what you do realize very quickly is, like, you know, money isn't everything, but it is also, like, a good metric for success as well. So, you know, it is, like, you know, especially important to still, like, pay attention to, like, where you, how you're tracking, I guess, like, for your goals. And, you know, like, for me, like, you know, right now, like, I am primarily focused on, like, NFTs, you know, like, I think, like, NFTs, just like last year, will be the best performing asset class of 2022. Um, there's just, there's, when you look at like the metrics, like we're already seeing OpenSea with record breaking volumes for January. Um, we're starting to see like, you know, China's involvement in the space now as well. You know, I'm sure you remember uh, what China's impact was like on Bitcoin all of those years ago as well. And we're starting to see that now on NFTs as well. So, you know, I, I think like, you can't like, you know, disregard like NFTs as a fad anymore. Like they are here to stay. And when you look at the metrics of the volume, the market caps, the the number of users still like, you know, you know, participating like within this space, it's like, it's still very like small. It's very minuscule. So for me, it's like, I'm going to continue to invest in the NFT ecosystem, obviously across the board, you know, like I'm really like focused, as I said, like on music NFTs, photography NFTs, I think will be like an, another big one um gaming is going to be huge you know play to earn um you know i recently invested um in a play to earn company called perion they allow you know um people to borrow assets from them like gaming assets like actually earn an income within that game i think it's like really fantastic um and you know we're, we're going to see like you know obviously like high-end fashion as well continue to like enter this space and then of, of course like the metaverse right you know we're going to see um, the metaverse to continue to expand is can continue to like, I guess, like, you know, mature a little bit because like, I still think like the technology is not quite there, but the people who are buying the land now are speculating that one day, you know, it will be there and that the land's going to be worth a whole lot more when that all happens as well. So very bullish on the metaverse, you know, like digital land, um, even like, you know, assets within the the metaverse as well you know so i think like there's a there's a lot happening in the space right now you really can't go wrong you know like it's, it's, you know nfts is just literally just like an umbrella term for like 
all of these like different like sectors within the space. And you just have to like, for, you know, as I said earlier as well, like, you know, don't follow the crowd, you know, don't be a sheep, do your homework, you know, look ahead, what's being overlooked right now, what is like, you know, what has like a good risk reward, you know, like right now, like I just recently bought some like, you know, music NFTs last night because the floor prices on some of these music NFTs are under 0.1 of an ETH. So, you know, that's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, the market cap on like, you know, some of these sectors are still incredibly small, which means there's like a lot of like room for growth as well. Uh, and there, there was a lot in that, which I'll let listeners unpack. Uh, Axie Infinity, would you, do you think it's too late? There's better opportunity elsewhere. Do you still hold any? Do you still have faith in it exponentially growing? Yes. Um, I do. I absolutely do. Like I'm still like heavily invested in Axie Infinity. I still hold, you know, a good portion of land, mix, mystic axes, uh, just regular axes as well. A lot of items. Um, I think their biggest advantage right now, obviously there's going to be like a lot of like competition this year. We're even starting to see like AAA publishers, you know, starting to pay attention to the space. Um, but Axie's biggest advantage right now is their war chest. You know, like they have a lot of like, you know, a lot of funding. They've made like a lot of money from their access token. They've just released a RON token. They've got like still three quadrants of land to sell, like within their Lunacia, like, you know, world as well. So, you know, they're not going anywhere anytime soon. Um, they have the funding. They've got the backing. They've got the team. I'm very confident in, you know, the, the leadership there as well. Um, and I really do think like they are going to be the one to watch this year, but there's also like, you know, other ones like Alluvium. And also I, I just recently came across another one called like Sin City. Um, so we are starting to see like a lot of like play to earn games, you know, reaching that sort of like, you know, production level where, you know, people can start, you know, playing within these worlds. And we're going to see more of that as well. And you know, what we're really going to start seeing is like, once we start like seeing like the technology to catch up a little bit, being able to like plug into these like virtual worlds and being able to like go about your day to day, you know, business within these virtual worlds and actually making money while you're there as well, you know? So like, I really do believe like, the, you know, we're getting close to a time where you won't even have to leave your house to like earn an income anymore. We already, we've already seen that right now, like, you know, at a very like basic level, but we're gonna like eventually get to like that whole like you know ready player one sort of level where people are gonna be just plugging in and they're gonna go about their day to day activities within the metaverse VR and actually be able to make money that way as well. Yeah, with uh, one of the biggest most successful companies in the world, Facebook rebranding its name literally to Meta. I have no doubt whatsoever that the future is uh, going to be metaverse or ready player one like uh personally now this is just my uninformed opinion that uh it's a little bit early it's still a little bit early uh this this is going to take much longer than people think but there's so much that's here to stay and it's over like uh, nfts it's happened um being able to get social validation and proof uh, uh clubs and exclusive access coming from nfts that is happening play to earn gaming is happening there's so much that uh pandora's box has opened upon and i have no doubt that this is one of the spaces to watch it's going to be one of the um, biggest most rapid growing nfts so uh so rapid growing spaces out there so 100 agree with you on that daniel um i I think this is the perfect point right now uh, to start drawing the episode to a close. Daniel, are there any topics that you wanted to have touched on that we haven't quite in this episode? No, like I think we've, you know, we've covered everything. We've covered the origin story, um, you know, where I came from, um, you know, how I got into the NFT space, um, you know, and like also like you know, into the future as well, like where I, you know, predict like where this is all going. And, you know, I, I do, you know, I do genuinely believe like, you know, this is, only just the start this is the beginning um and you know we do see the meme all the time like you know we're still early but like we actually are you know because you know looking back in 2013 like when i first got into bitcoin i didn't feel early at all you know and now people would laugh at that right so you know i i think like we are very early you just have to look at the metrics make your like you know look at the information and like, you know, create your own informed decision. I think that's the biggest thing that like a lot of people fail at doing. I think a lot of people are too reliant or maybe too lazy. I'm not too sure what it is, but like they just rely too much on like other people and like their information, but actually like doing the homework yourself and, you know, really, you know, really, really like just getting involved, you know, getting involved on like on discord, 
on Twitter. One thing we didn't really touch on was like, you know, obviously like, you, you know, utility NFTs as well, as, as you mentioned, like, you know, private membership clubs. Um, you know, I'm involved in a project called Party Degenerates and like that's something that we're really going to be pushing this year as well. So like having like that is oh, like yeah? exclusive like access to certain events and parties and festivals and like basically really like I guess like finally bringing like that online to the offline as well because like I feel like, you know, this like community is so incredible and like we've made all these like, these friends online, but it's like how about we also cement that in the real world as well, you know, like get that crossover happening. And I think that's really important as well, because like we just have such a fantastic, you know, group of people in this space. And, you know, I think, you know, we do need that mix of both like the on and the offline. Oh, definitely. Um, Party Degenerate sounds extremely interesting. And uh, if you're behind it, I know it's something I'm going to look further into and it's been an absolute pleasure having you on uh we have touched uh, on so much and uh, i would absolutely love to have you on again in six to 12 months mm -hmm. to see uh where this crazy journey is taking you next next time uh, see if that billionaire status has been hit see <laughs> if seed phrase is a world-renowned dj name although at that point um yeah you're probably going to be on um joe rogan's podcast or something and i'll try uh slide a time in but daniel thank you so much it's been absolute pleasure meditators that is all from us for this uh wild episode of the market meditations podcast i'll see you next time